Okay, so welcome back. Okay, so can you remember what the BFG said he's been he does with the trumpet that he blows into the children's bedroom? What is he blowing into the children's bedroom? Can you remember? It is dreams. Yes, he's blowing dreams into their bedroom and apparently dreams float around in the sky like little bubbles. And can you remember what the BFG said is how he knows that they're there? Can you see them? Can you smell them? Can you hear them? Yes, apparently they make a little buzzing noise. And so he's just been telling Sophie about his magical ears. Apparently he can hear all the secret whisperings of the world. Such as what? Sophie asked. In your country, he said, I is hearing the footsteps of a ladybird as she goes walking across the leaf. Honestly, Sophie said, beginning to be impressed. What's more, I is hearing those footsteps very loud, the BFG said. When a ladybird is walking across a leaf, I is hearing her feet going clumpity clump 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 like giant's footsteps. Good gracious me, said Sophie. What else can you hear? I is hearing the little ants chittering to each other as they scuttle around in the soil. You mean you can hear ants talking? Every single word, said the BFG, although I was not exactly understanding their language. Go on, said Sophie. Sometimes a very clear night, the BFG said, and if I is swiggling my ears in the right direction, and here he swiveled his grey ears upwards so they were facing the ceiling, if I is squiggling them like this and the night is very clear, I is sometimes hearing faraway music coming from the stars in the sky. A queer little shimmer passed through Sophie's body. She sat very quiet waiting for more. My ears is what told me you was watching me out of your window last night, the BFG said. But I didn't make a sound, Sophie said. I was hearing your heartbeat across the road, the BFG said, loud as a drum. Go on, Sophie said. Tell me some more, please. I can hear plants and trees. They is not exact. Do they talk, Sophie said. They is not exactly talking, the BFG said, but they is making noises. For instance, if I come along and I is picking a lovely flower, if I is twisting the stem of the flower till it breaks and the plant is screaming, I can hear it screaming and screaming very clear. You don't mean it, Sophie cried. How awful. It is screaming just like you would be screaming if someone was twisting your arm right off. True, Sophie asked. You think I swiss biggling you. It is rather hard to believe. Then I stopping right here, said the BFG sharply. I is not wanting to be called a fibster. Oh no, I'm not I'm not calling you anything, Sophie cried. I believe you, I do really. Please go on. The BFG gave her a long hard stare. Sophie looked right back at him, her face open to his. I believe you, she said quickly. She had offended him, she could see that. I wouldn't ever be fibbing to you, he said. I know you wouldn't, Sophie said, but you must understand that it isn't easy to believe such amazing things straight away. I understand that, the BFG said. So do please forgive me and go on, she said. He waited a while longer and then he said, It is the same with trees as it is with flowers. If I is chopping an axe into the trunk of a big tree, I is hearing a terrible sound coming from inside the heart of the tree. What sort of sound? Sophie said. Soft moaning sound, the BFG said. It is like the sound of an old man is making when he is dying slowly. Paused. The cave was very silent. 
Trees is living and growing just like you and me, he said. They is alive, so is plants. He was sitting very straight in his chair now, his hands clasped tightly together in front of him. His face was bright, his eyes round and as bright as two stars. Wonderful and terrible sounds I is hearing, he said. Some of them you would never wish to be hearing yourself. But some is like glorious music. He seemed almost to be transfigured by the excitement of his thoughts. His face was beautiful in its blaze of emotions. Tell me some more about them, Sophie said quietly. You just ought to be hearing the little mice is talking. He said, little mice is always talking to each other and I is hearing them as loud as my own voice. What do they say, Sophie asked. Only the mice know that, he said. Spiders is also talking a great deal. You might not be thinking it, but spiders is most tremendous natter boxes. And when they are spinning their webs, they are singing all the time. They are singing sweeter than a nightingale. Who else do you hear? Sophie asked. One of the big chat bags is the cattle piddlers, the BFG said. What do they say? They is arguing all the time about who is going to be the prettiest butterfly. That is all they is ever talking about. Is there a dream floating around in here now? Sophie asked. The BFG moved his great ears this way and that, listening intently. He shook his head. There is no dream in here, he said. In the bottles? I has a special place to go for catching dreams that is not that is not often coming to giant people. How do you catch them? The same way you must catch butterflies, the BFG answered, with a net. He stood up and crossed over to a corner of the cave where a pole was leaning against the wall. The pole was about 30 feet long and there was a net on the end of it. Here is the dream capture, he said, grasping the pole in one hand. Every morning I is going out and snitching new dreams to put in my bottles. Suddenly he seemed to lose interest in the conversation. I is getting hungry, he said. It is time for reefs. Okay, so the next chapter is called Snozcumbers. We will find out what a snozcumber is. If you don't eat people like all the others, he asked, then what do you live on? This, that is a squelching tricky problem around here, the BFG answered. In this slosh flunky giant country, happy eats like pineapples and pigwinkles is simply not growing. Nothing is growing except for one extremely icky poo vegetable. It is called the snozcumber. A snozcumber, cried Sophie, there's no such thing. The BFG looked at Sophie and smiled, showing about 20 of his square white teeth. Yesterday, he said, you was not believing in giants, was we? Today, we is not believing in snozcumbers. Just because we happen not to have actually seen something with our own two little winkles, we think it's not existing. What about, for instance, the grey squizzy scotch hopper? I beg your pardon, Sophie said. And the humble print. What's that, Sophie said. And the rat's rascal. The what, Sophie said. And the crumb scoddle. Animals, Sophie asked. They is common animals, said the BFG contemptuously. I is not a very no giant myself, but it seems to me that you is an absolutely no nothing human being. Your brain is full of rotten wool. You mean cotton wool, Sophie said. What I mean and what I say is two different things, the BFG announced rather grandly. I will now show you a snozcumber. The BFG flung open a massive comfort and took out the weirdest looking thing Sophie had ever seen. It was about half as long again as an ordinary man, but was much thicker. It was as thick around its girth as a perambulator. It was black with white stripes along its length, and it was covered all over with coarse novels. 
here we have it. And there is tiny little Sophie and the BFG does not look very happy about his dinner. Okay, we're going to find out more about the Snozz Cumber next time.